Hello, hello, hello. Someone give me a quick push in the chat if you can hear me. Give me a quick, quick update. <clears throat> Excuse me, Johnny. Good to have you. Helios. What a name, Helios. How you doing, brother? Welcome to Max Options Trading Beginner Course Day 2. Uh, what you're going to need today is a pen and paper, an empty notebook, whether you're on phone, laptop, PC, or tablet. Maybe some room for some push-ups. Here's the class schedule. We talk Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Uh, right after the buzzer. I don't want to keep you guys too late. Yesterday, we knocked out the introduction to MOT, the tools, setups, and brokers you need to trade. Today, we're going over candlesticks, which is going to lead us right into some further technical analysis tomorrow with support and resistance. But getting to the basics of technical analysis, it doesn't get much more basic than let's find out how the hell we read candles appropriately. You guys are a few minutes early to class. Just discuss with your classmates. Maybe talk about the good trades you made today. Maybe talk about the bad ones you probably made. Find a nice quiet place for your distractions. Be respectful at all times and stay on mute. Please be respectful to your classmates and myself as the instructor. If you have any questions during any time, please write them down. And I promise you at the end of the class, we will get to every question that is asked. Do not uh, skip a question. You know, every, every question you ask can help your classmates out. Stay focused, stay on task. Some foul language may be used during this classroom. This is an adult setting. I do slip up. I am a veteran. I worked in the prison system for a while. I'm a product of my environment. So make sure if you guys have sensitive eardrums nearby, put those headphones in. Before we begin, make sure you guys are following us on social media, on Facebook, Max Options Trading, on Twitter, Max Options Trade. I post some live trades there sometimes. So if you're like very interested, you should follow us at Max Options Trade. Uh, the big account on IG is at Max Options Trading. If you tag us right now in this IG account here at Max Options Trading, if you tag us on your IG, we'll repost it right back and give you guys the clout that you need. TikTok, Max Options Trading with two Gs. Two Gs, oh, that's going to bother me forever. We post some uh, very interesting uh, relative up update articles on Reddit all the time. And then our YouTube is launching in about three weeks. Can't wait. Make sure you like and subscribe when you guys do get to see this video on YouTube. Uh, don't slip up if you're taking this class. You're not going to want to miss it. I'm going to take a quick five seconds to go grab some water. I'll be right back. Good old bubble water. You guys drink bubble water? Does anyone here drink bubble water? I think if you drink regular water these days, it's 2021, come on. All water should have a little carbonation in it. A little bit, a little bit of bubble water. A little hot, a little flustered. You know, I gotta do this nice class, this YouTube presentation, and next thing I know, my internet's shit. So let's hop right in it. Let's get after it. And uh, we'll go from there. Day two, Max Ops Training, beginner course, candlesticks. So what the hell is a candlestick? A candlestick is a type of price chart used in technical analysis, TA, that displays the high, low, open, and closing prices of a security or underlying asset for a specific period. When we're referring specific periods, we're talking about on your trading view accounts or your charting software, where you're looking at like the three minute chart, the five minute chart, maybe you're looking at the one daily chart. That means all of those candles represent that specific time frame. All right, candlestick charts are used by traders to determine possible price action movement based on past patterns. Past patterns, that's what we're looking for, all right? Candlesticks are useful when trading as they show four price ports, uh, points, the open, close, high, and low, throughout the period of the time that the trader specifies. So now we know what a candlestick is, but how is a candlestick formed? Well, this is a great question, Max. All right, thank you, I fucking wrote it. Uh, you first must understand how to read a base of candlestick. So in order to read a candlestick chart, you must have a data set that contains the open, high, low, and close for each time period you want to display, which could be anywhere from the one second chart to the daily, all right? The hollow or 
uh, filled portion of the candlestick is called the body. The thin lines above and below represent the high low range called shadow or wicks. All right. The high mark is the top of the upper shadow and the low is the bottom of the lower shadow. All right. Um, the only difference between the two is this, the stock closes higher than the opening price. The candle is drawn with the bottom at the, the, of the body representing the opening price and the top of the body representing the closing price. All right. So I know I'm saying all this and you guys are like, what the fuck is he talking about? Let me just show you real quick. All right. This is probably the easiest way to, to, to look at it. So the only difference, like I just said, is the closing and the opening. All right. So on a bullish candle, you'll notice that it opens low. This was the low of the time period. Here's the shadow and or wick. And then as the bullish momentum, as buyers stepped in, they pushed this candlestick to the upside. And this is where the candle closed. And then in that specific time period, this was the highest price action that we saw for that specific candle. Okay, so the difference between the bullish and bearish is that the it opens at the top. And because it's a bearish candle, because sellers stepped in, they took charge of this time period and they drove the stock price or underlying asset lower, then the close is down here. So this was the lowest price action that we saw during that specific time period. This was the highest. And then the body is open to close. So the major difference between the two is that the open and close are reversed. So that's the easiest way to really remember. And then um, besides the obvious, the two different colors. I mean, if you, if you, if, you know, look at, this, look at this, unless you're colorblind. Hey, I got a brother who's colorblind. This shit would probably look orange to him. And if that's the case, I would say go with black and white, maybe some shins of gray. All right, you're welcome. So the basics of candlesticks, at the most basic level, a candlestick price chart is just a battle between buyers and sellers over the given period of time that you're using for your chart. It's like a game of tug of war between the buyers and sellers. The closer the close gets to the high, the closer the buyers are to winning. The closer the close is to the low, the closer the sellers are to winning. All right. I didn't take that reference, by the way. I just copied it. Like I copied 90% of this class, but uh, that's a good one. That's a real good one. Buyers and sellers, tug of war. All right, there's six tried and true principles for determining who won this game of tug of war um, for those specific time frames. The long white or green candlesticks indicate that buyers had control. Long black or red candlesticks indicate sellers had control. All right, small candlesticks show that neither buyers nor sellers could pull out the other of tug of war and finished about where they started. The long lower shadow or wick at the bottom it indicates that sellers were in control but then the buyers had made a bigger move towards the end of the candle. Conversely, a long upper shadow or wick means that the buyers started off strong, but at the end of the day, the sellers made a bigger move. A long upper and lower shadow on both sides of the body indicate that both the buyers and sellers had shown some strength during the time frame, but neither could really pull it out. And we're going to go over this one. They wind up ending up right back in the middle. And this is going to bring us to our doji. All right. But that's the six principles of determining who wins the tug of war right there so you can see here just a couple examples this is a bullish candle where we saw no uh selling action here's a bearish candle where we saw no buying action all right neutral candles no one really won bullish here's that long wick long wick where they started off hot but then the bears didn't you know they they got kicked out they're in the mud now they lost and then here's a neutral, which we're probably going to go over and we we'll discuss our doji candles. But if candlesticks create a pattern, what types are there? So there's dozens of them. There's like literally dozens of candlestick patterns. There's a whole Japanese book um, called, I don't remember, it's called like the Japanese candlestick fucking dictionary. Huge book with like all kinds of candlestick patterns. I read it like a year ago. It was fantastic phenomenal and you can actually trade just using this stuff it's fantastic but today we're just going to focus on my six I, I like six of these bad boys actually it's like eight i gave a couple an honorary shout out to the hammer uh, but these are time tested and they're easy to spot with a high level of accuracy all right so these are good for the beginner holy shit we're in a beginner course who would have thought all right we got the doji the bullish engulfing the bearish engulfing the evening star is my favorite Besides a doji, of course, the three white soldiers and the three black crows. It's 2021, so maybe we should just call this the three soldiers and the three crows. All right, non whatever, non gender, non binary. I don't know what these fucking kids are doing these days. 
Well, let's go over these six together. First, we're gonna go over the doji. All right, the doji is the easiest candlestick pattern as their openings and closings price are very close to each other. All right, the candle uh, looks like a plus sign. It's as simple as that. Doji candles look like plus signs, Something like that. Whoa, Mr. T, let's connect there. All right, they're neutral patterns. However, they gain significance if they appear after a period of steady buying or selling. The doji candlestick is used to show that a move may have ended and momentum has slowed down to either direction, All right? This signifies the end of buying in an uptrend and the end of selling in a downtrend, okay? This does not necessarily mean that there will be a reversal or a full move to the opposite side, but it's possible, all right? Nothing's Nothing's for sure. This candlestick analysis that you're going to learn right now is just a piece of the puzzle um, that helps uh, help could help you with a greater uh, great greater picture. All right. So here's what Doji's look like. Doji's have bullish, neutral, and bearish type of candles where you can see the plus signs up top. <clears throat> this is your cross. This is your full neutral, and this is your gravestone Doji. All right. But these are all neutral. That could signify the end of a trend and a possible reversal. That's the important thing to remember there. Write that down if you're writing anything down right now, which you should be, because I said to bring pen and paper. And if you're not having your pen and paper, that means you're not prepared for class. So do five push-ups. Do five push-ups, had some integrity. If you don't have integrity to do five push-ups, then you probably won't have integrity to cut your 40% losing trade. Think about that. All right, let's head on over to our charting software and let's find some dojis. All right, so I'm gonna exit out of here. I'm gonna head on over to my charting software. Look at my beautiful setup we got here. We got a spy. We got a gap down below. We have a beautiful run up. All right. But what we're looking for is doji. So let's head on over to look at apples back at 126. I love it. Let's see if we can't find a doji candle. I'm a swing trader. So I usually look at the daily. <clears throat> let's find us a doji. Class, if you find a doji, uh, go ahead and shout it out in the chat. And then let's we can all run over there together. There's a pretty neutral candle right here. Um, I wouldn't say this is doji. This is doji-ish, uh, pretty neutral, um, but it's not the exact plus sign that we're looking for at the end of a trend. Remember, we're looking for that reversal at the end of the trend. What you got here, chat? Snap on the daily. All right, I'm, I'm going to trust you here. You know if you're wrong, you got to do five push-ups. That's just everyone knows that. Snap on the daily. Look at that. Closed with the doge. Pretty good. You can get a little bit thinner than that, but that, that's a doji. That is a doji right there, nice call. Here's a pretty uh, pretty good one right here. There's a bullish doji, which showed the end of that. And then we came back down a little bit. I think I just saw a good one. Here we go, look at this. It doesn't get better than this, right? We have our neutral doji and a gravestone doji. After this downtrend here, does everyone see this? And then bang, look at that pop back up there, right there. So it, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen because we can see the doji here. We had this massive run up and then it dropped back down a little bit. So you can see how it is pretty accurate and uh, it's a great one to know. So we have a neutral, we got a dragonfly, we got a gravestone. Holy shit, Snapchat. That's a that's a great, uh, great Sandeep, that's a great call right there. You get a free uh, five, uh, five push-up coupon. Next time you fuck up, you get you get the a freebie. So we got look at this right here. This neutral doji signified the end of this uptrend, and we saw a little consolidation period. Then we had a dragonfly followed right the next day by a gravestone, and then we had another continuation of that uptrend there. Beautiful, beautiful, just to see how those uh those dojis work right there. All three of them. All right, let's talk about the bullish engulfing pattern. It's just that it's an indication that you may see momentum to the upside from buyers, all right? Uh, the bullish engulfing is um, one of the, the best candlestick pattern recognition price charts. Like it is just, when you see it, it's you, you can't miss it. It's easy to recognize and it usually plays out, all right? The pattern signals that the momentum to the upside is ended and you could see a pullback from those levels when the sellers start to step in. So the second candle in a bearish engulfing pattern engulfs the previous candle, which is smaller in size. Now pay attention to this part because a lot of people are confused on this shit. Both the tails or wicks of the candles are covered by the bigger red or bearish candle. So even the wicks, the shadows, top to bottom need to be completely engulfed by the next candle. All right. Such patterns are also seen at the end of consolidation periods, not 
uptrends or downtrends. All right. So this is what we're looking for here. You can see that the wick completely covers both sides of this bullish candle. We had a consolidation period, and then we see the reversal of the downtrend here. All right, chat. Head on over to your charting software again. Let's find some bullish and bearish engulfings. I know the perfect example because I played it with a call out in the group and we made a lot of money on this one, all right? So I'll give you guys a break on this one because I got the perfect example here. We played this bearish engulfing in the Discord uh, and it was a call out. I also got a complete over uh, overbought signal that we broke back into the extremes. But look at this. Uh, engulfing right here. Does everyone see this? So we look at the, the trend. You can see, bang, it covers the whole top of this one. Covers the whole bottom of that one. So there we have a complete bearish engulfing candle. As you can see, the wicks cover. And then from that bearish engulfing, which was the first indication of a possible reversal, was the candle. And then on the next day, we opened up below major support and then look at what proceeded there. So if you just played this bearish engulfing, I mean, look, the downtrend, you're talking about 30, 40% drop on that stock, on that price action, you would have made tremendous, significant gains on that. And you could have did it all just by recognizing a bearish engulfing. All right, pretty cool. All right, chat, now let's move on over to, I believe, what I, little brother, little brother, wait. Did I skip bullish? Here we go. Bullish engulfing. So a bullish engulfing uh, is just that. Wait a minute. What just happened? Okay, I see what happened. I had I had skipped ahead there and showed a bearish engulfing. Um, the bullish engulfing is the same exact thing. Uh, the the previous candles, the tails and wicks cover the entire candle. A pattern before. Um, they're usually shown at the end of the consolidation period. It's the same exact thing, except the bullish engulfing you'll see here at the bottom of this uh, downtrend and consolidation period. And then we have the wick cover the wick, the wick to cover the wick. Mm, it's very confusing to me. I'm not sure why I did that. All right, chat, let's look for some bullish engulfing candles. Somebody find me a bullish engulfing. I'm gonna do a little searching myself. Let's see if we can find some bullish engulfing candles. I really gotta clean up some of these. When anybody has uh, one, go ahead and shout it out for me. Disney's been wild for the last couple of weeks. Let's see if we can find one on Disney. Here we go. Look at this, doesn't get better than this, right? Right here on Disney, let's go ahead and check out this horizontal line here. Let's check out the horizontal line here. This is a bullish, as bullish engulfing as we get. You can see right here. This is such a good example. I think I should definitely throw my throw an arrow on it there. You can see that it completely engulfs the previous downtrend, which we had. So it was downtrending pretty hard. And then after that bullish engulfing candle, you can see the complete uptrend here which led from price action going from 118 to as high as 180, you know? And if you could have just recognized that, um, that bullish engulfing, you would see a 56% uh, increase if you were to swing trade this or, or purchase underlying shares. It's just a perfect example of how that simple candlestick price chart recognition can lead to something so much more um, greater than that. You see that? something to look for. So that's the bearish engulfing. And this is a bullish engulfing, two beautiful examples. All of you should do five pushups because nobody found a better example than me, honestly. Very disheartening chat. <clears throat> Let's move over to this bad boy. This is, this is a great, great pattern right here. I love this pattern. There's always great examples of it. All right. The bearish evening star is a reversal pattern that starts with the tall green bullish candlestick. All right, so we got big green right here. Even though it's red, ignore it. Green is striped. All right, this makes new highs than previously seen. So we're at new highs. The market continues to gap up on the following day. So we got another gap up up here. 
As the pattern shows a gap in overextended levels match with seller stepping in, the move to the downside is probable. So you wind up with like a doji-ish. It could have a little body, but you wind up with something like this up in there. All right, the gap down on the third candlestick or the red bearish candle completes the pattern. So what you have is you have something like this. This is, hey, hold on chat, all right? I never said I was an artist, but this is pretty good actually. I went a little lazy on the third candle there. That's pretty good. This predicts that the decline will continue and we'll see further continuation on the downtrend. This could lead to a greater sell-off if there's no major support areas near, which you could say for like anything, but this, this pattern is fantastic and it's also very well known for showing that continuation pattern. All right, this is what it looks like here. So you see that we have new highs in the market or that underlying stock. We had that star up here that seller stepped in and wind up finishing red for the day. And then we have the third candle, which completes the evening star, which leads to the further continuation sell-off. That's exactly what we're looking for, just like that. Head on over to your charting software and let's find us an evening star. All right, somebody find me an evening star. I don't want to be the one to do, do all the work. You guys need to get some, ex, get some exercise in here, all right? Oh, that's close, but it gapped up. So that's not, that's not top notch, all right? This is practice for you guys as well. So take this time to start doing a little research. Remember, you practice how you play. So while you guys are practicing right now, uh, looking for these evening stars, um, this is where you start fi fine tuning these skills. This is how you get better. This is exactly what you need to start doing to get better. So something just like this, kind of mm, new highs, gapped up, came down. And then we gap down significantly, but then you could see buyers had stepped in. This technically is uh, an even star pattern because it checks all the blocks right here. Um, it's not it's not a pretty one, but you do have new highs, a gap up, and then a continue the down with no continuation until actually, yeah, two days later, it looks like it had dropped significantly. Here's another great one. So you can see new highs, the star, the gap up here. You see there's the gap, the star, and then look at that. There's another one right there. And then this would be your entry, would be the third candle, the, the, the fill of this gap, if you're a badass, this would be your entry right here. And your stop loss would be denial back up above the, the previous high. So you're it's a pretty easy one to play, but if you do enter there, you could see um, there's no reason you shouldn't have been able to take profits there at any time. So that's a pretty good one. Dang, you guys are, you guys are not on top of it today. I gotta tell you, you gotta wake up. Let's do this. Chris, Chris, you're you're like 30 minutes late, Chris. Let's Chris, let's get it together, my friend. Get your coffee, my guy. All right, let's continue. Let's talk about three white soldiers real quick. All right, three white soldiers, it's a bullish pattern that's used to predict the reversal of a current downtrend in a price chart. All right, it's a very bullish pattern. These candlesticks should not have very long shadows or wicks. Um, they can still have shadows or wicks, but just not very long. <clears throat> a doji candlestick may signify the end of the bullish pattern, even though the pattern is called the three white soldiers based on where you host your charting software. It could be green, white. It could be like green, like mine. Um, <clears throat> but the three white soldiers looks like this. So you have a downtrend. Um, you can see that the downtrend came all the way down here. Um, didn't really finish with a doji. However, three white soldiers and then the continuation. Very strong, very bullish candles. The important things to remember is they created new highs and they had bigger bodies than they did wicks. That's what we're looking for with these three white soldiers. All right, so new highs, small wicks, shadows, big bodies. That's exactly what we're looking for. <clears throat> the three black close, uh, crows, conversely, it's the bearish pattern that predicts when the reversal of an uptrend uh, of the price chart. The close of the previous candle must exceed the previous lows, the opposite of the three white soldiers. These candlestick patterns may be red or white based on the charting software you use, like TOS. Um, the bearish or downtrending candles are aggressive and should show small or no shadows or wicks. So let's take a look at the opposite real quick. So you can see that we had this beautiful uptrend 
And then we had three very bearish, strong candles here, huge bodies, no wicks. And then we have a continuation to the downside. <clears throat> so that's what we're looking for there. If this would be your, your, uh, your entry when you recognize that we have a reversal and we have three strong, like this amount of selling pressure that you could enter probably for the continuation right here. So let's head on over to our charting software and find some crows and find some soldiers. What the hell did I just do? All right, let's find some crows and find some soldiers. I think I might be able to head on over to spy and oh, we got one already chat. Here we go. Now we're talking. Who's the first one to bat? CTRM. Jed, you want to put the CTR, you want to put these push-ups on there? You want to put some push-ups on there? What am I looking for? Crows or soldiers? Mm, didn't get new lows, really, on that one. Where am I looking at here on this penny stock? Um, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Who was that? Jed, Jed, do five push-ups. Not right, my friend. Chris, Chris, you're back on Facebook. Chris, I'm going to give you another shot. All right, let's head on over to Facebook. Let's see what, what are we looking for? Soldiers? Let's take a look, Chris. Where am I? Where, where's the, no, where am I looking at? What time frame? Give me time frames here. Don't, don't leave me hanging in the, in the dry, my friend. One year. I don't even know if I have the yearly, Chris. What the hell are you talking about? One year. I mean, here's a pretty strong example right here. This is exactly what the three crows looks like right here. Chris, you're all over the place, my guy. Chris, I hope you're I hope you're in my class for the next 10 days because we got to square you away. You're all over the place. All right. This is the three uh, soldiers right here. As you can see, new highs, new highs, right? Does everyone see that? Small wicks, no small wicks, and then bang, doji candle um, with a continuation. So that's exactly what we're looking for, something like this. Does everyone see that right here? The three big bullish candles, very bullish price action. Um, ended with a doji. And then you can just see the continuation run up has lasted uh, the following seven years. So very nice there. Chris, I'll give you that one, even though I had to go do a little research myself. Uh, not bad. All right. Someone find me three crows. Actually, you know what? I bet you, I bet you if we hit on back to spy on the daily during the March sell off, I bet you we could find a couple crows here. Hmm, no, not really. No, really. What about this one? It's a pretty good one right here. Some some strong wick action on that one, but nice lows. These ones have smaller wicks. You can definitely see this. Look at the selling pressure on this candle. Holy shit. Crows also in WM after that. WM Ivan. Ivan, let's take a look, my friend. I'll look for you. Waste management. What that what time frame you want me to take a look at, Ivan? Don't leave me hanging. All right. Give me some time frames. All right, there is no crows uh on this at all. You said after 120 p.m. 150 p.m. Okay, you're getting very specific. Oh, okay. This chart is all over the place. This is uh this is not gonna work. All right, Ivan, do push-ups. This is terrible. This is not three crows right here. Well, let's take a look at uh Tesla. Here's a strong one. Okay, perfect example right here. Ready? Look at this on Tesla. Double doji at the top. Perfect example of a doji candle price chart recognition. Does everyone see the power of this doji? But then we have a doji and now we got three crows right here to match that doji. Does everyone see that on the 5M on Tesla today or yesterday? 
So we had a doji, which signifies the chance of a reversal. Then we had three crows to start that reversal pattern. And then we have your continuation down. Does everyone see that? That is top notch candle price chart recognition right there. You could have entered on the doji. You could have entered on the break of those three crows and you could have wrote it all the way down to the bottom here. And we're gonna discuss these patterns here in a second. But look at that, check out that, those crows and the doji right there. Beautiful candlestick price chart recognition. That's why I say, you see how easy these are to find? It's because these have those high success rates and they're very easy to see. Like three bullish candles, small wicks or shadows, right? Very nice, I like that one a lot. All right. What the hell is going on? How do I how do I make the screen full screen again, chat? I'm very confused right now. All right, forget about it. We're moving on. Honorable mention. Look, we got the hammer and the inverted hammer. All right. The hammer and the invertal ha inverted hammer. Both of these are reversal indications. You have the hammer that shows bullish. And then you have the inverted hammer, which shows the bottom of the current downtrend, which would reverse. Both bullish, all right? Both, let's see if we can find a hammer. Actually, I think I just saw one here. So if you look right here, at the end, you see this hammer pattern here? So you got a hammer right here, which shows the end of this downtrend and then a possible reversal, and it'll go up there. But if you look here, you see we started downtrending again right here small little baby downtrend, but we have this inverted hammer, which also led to a reversal. Does everyone see that? So like anything, they're very easy to see, the hammers, um, and they usually come at the bottom of downtrends, and you can see that reversal to the upside. So when you go to the bottom of all these little downtrends here, look, at there's a third hammer, uptrend. And you can just see how these hammers, look at the bottom of this downtrend, hammer. Does everyone see that? Look how easy that is to see. That's why you can't forget the hammer. Honorable mention, shout out hammers. Fantastic job. You guys didn't even need to look for it because it did such a fantastic job. I'm thoroughly impressed with the hammer today. All right. Let's talk about these Heikinashi candles. Can you guys see my top bar right here or you just see the PowerPoint? Because I do not know how to make it larger. I am not the most technically savvy person. All right, this recording is gonna be terrible, but we're gonna drive forward, all right? Top bar. Yeah, I have no idea. Oh, all right, we're just gonna leave it. I'm gonna wind up screwing this whole thing up. Let's talk about Heikinashi candles. I love Heikinashi candles. I use them um, for all my swing trades, basically. I love them. Uh, if there's no gaps involved in the trading, I'm going Heikinashi. All right, Heikinashi, sometimes spelled Heikinashi, means average bar, all right, in Japanese. The Heikinashi technique can be used in conjunction with candlestick charts when trading securities to spot market trends, all right? There's no gaps on Heikinashi candles, all right? So it's important to know if you're using Heikinashi candles, don't expect to see the gaps up and the gaps down uh, on, on intraday movement or when we open up from previous day after hours because uh, there's no gaps on these charts. And that's one of the biggest differences between regular candle uh, sticks and Heikinashi, no gaps, all right? The current candle is calculated using price uh, information from the previous candle. And since Heikinashi technique uses price information from two periods, a trade setup takes longer to develop. So a lot of breakout patterns don't show up as well on Heikinashi candles either because it takes two candles prior data to create the third candle. Usually this is not an issue for swing traders like Max, who loves this shit for swing trading. I'm going to show you why in a second, um, but who have time to let their trades play out. However, day traders, um, you really need to exploit these the technical analysis in a quick you know, manner, especially scalpers and the Heikinashi charts are, are not as responsive uh, and useful as normal candlesticks will be, especially if you're a gap trader. There's really no reason for you to ever use Heikinashi. All right, so here's the major, differ major difference. So if you take a look at the Heikinashi candles, you'll see you have a red bottom of a downtrend, and then you have the uptrend here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green candles. But if we look at the uptrend here, you'll see we had five green candles, one red day, a huge red uh, green day, all right? And then at the top here. So you see the difference there. And then the downtrend here, 
on the Heikinashi candles, we have all red all the way down because the trend was intact using the previous two data points. But on the downtrend here, you can see that we had a consolidation period. All right. And that's even uh, with bullish engulfing and then the major drop here. So you could have been faked out by this candle. You could have said, oh, it's the bottom of the trend. We're bullish again. And then the next day you get absolutely crushed. We head on down to our doji candle here and then you'll see the uptrend continued. But the uptrend here, we have green, 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 red, red, green, 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 red, where we have green, 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 red, red, all green for the rest of the way up. So you can see the clear difference of why Heikinashis are good for swing trading because it creates that beautiful trend for you. Let's head on over to our charting software real quick and find some Heikinashis for you guys. So that you just, for me, if you're looking, I just come to the top here. Right here, we have the ticker. We have that time frame for our candlestick price charts. So when you hear people say the daily, they're talking about the daily. Scalpers might use the one to three minute, day traders the five to 15. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm referring to using those different price uh, charts. This is what I'm referring to here. So for this, let's just go to the daily because I'm talk, you know, using swing trading. Um, let's head over to this third bar on the top left here. You'll see candlesticks just simply come on down to Heikinashi, all right? So if you take a look here, look at this price chart. So we had a breakout of this beautiful, this is Tesla, we had a beautiful breakout here. Let me actually go to a, a clearer, something a little bit clearer for you guys. I do a lot of TA on my stock, sorry about that. So right here, look at this on Snapchat. You could see that we had this beautiful trend here and we only had two, five, seven, nine, Let's just use this price point right here. So from here to here, we only had 10 red candles. All right, does everyone see this? We had this first little doji, three, six. So we only have 10 candles there. So let's go to the regular candles here and you'll see that we have five just here at the bottom. Here's the gap, see how the difference, there's no gaps. There's the big gap. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Is every, I mean, you, you can't, you gotta be blind and not, well, maybe if you are blind, then yeah, you're not gonna see this, but candles, Heikinashi shows a much clearer trend. And that's why it's great to use. So especially on little trends like this, even, it works fantastic as well, because this might be shown as consolidation on a normal. So we have an uptrend, but you could see the bounce in there. However, if you're swing trading, there's really no cause for panic as it never even broke below the 21 day exponential moving average, which we'll go over in our TA class. But that's the major difference. And I'm a huge fan of Heikinashi candles um, for my swing trading. I've been doing it for a long time. Let me just get these out of the way. I don't want any questions about them. And that's the big difference between the two right there. So conclusion for the candlesticks, the last thing I wanna share with you guys on candlesticks is that mastering candlestick charts and patterns definitely lead to finding tradable market tendencies, all right? And that's what you guys want. You wanna be able to find the patterns that lead to put you in front of the waves. That's the goal there, isn't it? The price of any market follows laws that can be observed through candlestick chart patterns. This is as old as it gets with price chart recognition is candlesticks. All right, having some definable rules and entry based on candlestick patterns can really help you, an aspiring trader, maintain a consistent success rate and create your own strategy. Find out what works best for you. This is just a piece of the puzzle of the bigger picture I'm gonna paint for you guys during this class. Um, some of the best candlestick patterns are more predictable once you have a framework developed around these chart patterns. Um, but as a trader, your obligation is to apply these trading concepts inside your own understanding of the market, i.e. your own strategies and systems and such to, uh, to fit this into your TA uh, toolbox. It's just one of the things we're going to stuff in that toolbox to get you guys ready to become great traders. And that is it. Now that you're familiar with my top candlesticks and how they look, how they operate, you found some on your own. Um, and I, we got to display some great examples. Does anybody have any questions at all at this time? Please um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm gonna drink some water real quick. Thank you guys, you heard that sizzle. Did you guys hear that? That is bubble water.
I fucking love Pellegrino. I'm uh, currently living in Italy on the on the water right now, so this is Frizzante Blue, fancy. You guys don't have any questions? You want to stick around while I answer the questions that people asked? If not, thank you guys so much for attending day two of the beginner course. Any books to recommend for TA? Uh, gotta be honest with you, Helios. Uh, I've never read a book on TA. I don't have any recommendations. In our Discord, if you go to the education section, the Japanese candlestick guide is there, all 400 pages of it. Um, but for actual technical analysis, like a full book, I'm sorry, my friend, I don't have any for you. When you're trading using Heikinashi candles for swings, what are you looking for exactly? Um, you're just looking for it to be one part of the puzzle. So of course, I'm looking for my standard technical analysis that tells me that a swing looks good. Like down here, you see, you know, RSI, stochastics, these are momentum oscillators matched by volume um, that I would use these mostly. Um, but you can see here after a doji, um, once you start getting these green candles, it, it's basically, okay, we're on an uptrend now you know, above the exponential moving averages, even better. When you're above the nine and the 21, very bullish. You could use these as your uh, as your trend. So you could erode this one all the way up saying it didn't break the 21, didn't break the 21, didn't break the 21. And you could have exited here um, just on this trend here because it was clear, it was concise the entire time. Whereas regular candle price action, um, this trend is a little bit choppier you may have tried, you might have panic sold once or twice on these, but that's what I'm looking for with the Heikonashis. It's just a piece of the puzzle that shows a much clearer trend, much clearer picture. I bet if we go to one of these crazy stocks um, that have been going nuts the last couple of days, um, like Riot, bet you'll see some good green ones here. Yeah, so you just see the trend on Riot here. He had one little sell off, but didn't even break the 21 until up here. You could erode this thing from $3 to $70, $80, just from following one simple trend pattern here using Heikonashi candles. Does that make sense? It's just a piece of the puzzle, iPhone. iPhone, I like your name. Any other questions? Any other questions at all? And remember the important thing with those Heikonashis is no gap. So when you're headed in for a gap fill, you got to switch back and forth sometimes. How do you put the colored lines under the sticks? <laughs> that was me uh, banging my head on the microphone. So we're going to refer to these as EMAs, exponential moving averages, Stephen. And I'm going to go over this with you guys and my own personalized script, my own indicator uh, on technical analysis day. All right. But these are candlesticks. These are candlesticks and these price action movement I use. Um, don't even worry about them right now. We're looking at candles today. All right. I even asked in that riot as it was going up, there was dojis there. So how much can you rely on dojis? Uh, the dojis, Ivan, like anything, you don't put full reliability into anything in trading. Remember that, write that down. Actually, that's a beautiful piece of that. You don't put anything fully reliable in trading. All right, nothing is perfect or else everyone would be a millionaire. But dojis at the bottom of periods are really good. So when you start seeing something get exhausted like up here, dojis tend to show reversals. They're tough to catch. Look at this one right here. Here's a perfect example. Dojis are tough to catch, but they show great. Is this on Heikonashi? This is even on Heikonashi here. Let's see if this doji is the same on regular price action. Yep. So even regular price action, we're getting a doji there and shows the reversal. Um, I would say put little faith into it, but if it matches your all the rest of your technical analysis, then it's just one piece of the greater puzzle, my friend, and then you're ready to make a move confidently. Does that make sense, Ivan? Very good, very good. Any last questions, anyone? Any last ones? Let me know, let me know. If not, 
Thank you guys so much. Uh, no problem. Don't don't apologize ever. Thank you guys so much for attending. If you enjoyed this section, head on over to our testimonial review channel. Let the rest of the team know. You just learned about candlesticks. We're already sharpening up those tools for you guys to make you guys the traders that you're that you're supposed to be. Um, we're gonna get you. Oh shit! Look at this. I figured it out. Head on over there, guys. This was class number two. Sorry for all the little uh, functional mistakes. I'm not the best at uh, this whole uh, recording and such. Thank you, guys. Um, if you don't have any more questions, head on over to that review channel. Let me know how the class was. Tell me I was full of shit. Tell me you learned a whole bunch of stuff. I always enjoy teaching for you guys. Uh, and I hope, I hope we get everyone back here tomorrow to go over support and resistance. It's such a fundamentally strong part of technical analysis. you got to know support and resistance. It's how I started trading. Love teaching it. And I think you guys are going to learn so much um, from this class, especially tomorrow. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take you back. All right. Thanks, Geetha. You guys have a great, great evening. Enjoy the rest of your days. And I'll see you at the buzzer.